Moving on to our next investigation, we're going to take a look at something called a cyclic quadrilateral. And a cyclic quadrilateral is a quadrilateral who has its four vertices on the same circle. So if you put four vertices on a circle and connect all of the vertices together, all the points together, then you have four chords, and the four chords together would make what we call a cyclic quadrilateral. So we're going to be looking at relationships between the angles of a cyclic quadrilateral. And by the way, up here on your note sheet, you have the definition of a cyclic quadrilateral as well. So our sketchpad has us just sketch out the cyclic quadrilateral and then to take a look at the four angles. So let me see if I can bring up my cyclic quadrilateral sketch here that I have made. So if you take a look at this, what we're looking at is all of these over here would be the four angles. Notice we name an angle with three letters. So E, B, C would be angle B up here. And B, C, D would be the next one going clockwise around. So angle C and so on. So there's the four angles. So we're looking at the relationship between some of the angles. Now what you should remember back from our work in chapters 4 and 5 that we have a relationship between all of the angles in any quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. So if we add up all four of these angles here, they'll add up to 360 degrees. But is there anything else special about the relationship of the angles in a cyclic quadrilateral? I'm going to drag some vertices around here and see what happens. So you'll notice as I drag E around, so basically I'm changing this inscribed angle right here. Actually, I'm not changing inscribed angle, but I am changing uh, B up here, angle B, and also D. So if I'm dragging E around, those would be the two angles that I am changing. And so let me hone in on a nice even number here. So if you take a look at that, the two angles that are changing were angle B up here and angle D here. And you should notice the relationship between these two angles. Looks like they add up to 180 degrees. If I test this out, say right here, get one to be 70 degrees, the other one ends up being about 110 degrees. So they add up to 180. Now take a look at those two angles. That would be angle B and angle D. So that's this angle here and this angle here. So it seems like no matter where I drag E, so I kind of change the look of the quadrilateral, those two angles are changing, but they stay as a relationship between each other to add up to 180 degrees, so they are supplementary to each other. Let's try another one of the angles. So let's try to drag angle B around a little bit. Now that happens to also be attached to the circle, so by doing this I'm also changing the sides of the circle, which maybe is a little bit annoying. Let me go down here with B and do that same thing that's not attached to the radius of the circle so we can stay focused on what we're trying to show here. So by doing this, notice I'm changing the look of the quadrilateral and I'm also changing angle C and E this time. So it would be angle C and E that are changing. And as I do that, you'll notice that the relationship between those two angles is that they are supplementary to each other. They also add to 180 degrees. All right, and I can further show that by bringing up these two calculations on the bottom here, and you'll notice no matter what I do, those angles B and B add up to 180 degrees, and no matter which one of these I drag up here, angle C and E add up to 180 degrees as well. So that'll be our first property on the second page here of our notes. The cyclic quadrilateral conjecture says that the opposite, so it wasn't the angles that were consecutive, it wasn't the angles that are next to each other, it was the ones that were opposite each other. So this angle and this angle would be opposite angles, and the opposite angles of cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary, so they add up to 180 degrees. Supplementary. And so those two would add up to 180 degrees, and also these two angles are opposite each other and would add up to 180 degrees. Scanning down the page here, we're looking at an investigation related to arcs between parallel lines. So if you look at the circle here in the sketch pad directions, we're looking at these two arcs between the parallel lines. Now, looking at those two, you might start to 
figure out what the actual property is here. Let's bring up the sketch and see what happens. So what I did was made two parallel lines. So I've got line BC and line ED. They are parallel to each other. And I also measured out the arcs that are between them. So arc CD here, this minor arc, and EB right here. You'll notice that those two arcs measure the same between those parallel lines. Now let's drag some of these vertices around a little bit. So this point C, you notice I'm changing the direction of the parallel lines. I'm not really changing the width of it. But you'll notice that the two arcs stay the same measure. They stay at 54.92 degrees. Let's drag B around. Now since that changes the size of the circle, because B is attached to the radius, you can see that the arc measures are changing, but they're changing in sync. So they're exactly the same no matter where I put point B and no matter how wide our parallel lines are or how big the circle is, the arcs between them stay the same. So that is the second of our properties on the second page of our notes here called the Parallel Lines Intercepted Arcs Conjecture. And that says the parallel lines intercept congruent arcs on a circle. So the arcs between the parallel lines are exactly the same measure. These two arcs, if you're going to say these two arcs are the same measure, 